I think I, I'll get started with the introductions and um, I'll admit people as they arrive. Um, good morning and welcome to Music Network's professional development series for December 2022, taking charge of your performance career, developing essential skills. My name is Sarah Ledwidge and we're delighted to welcome John Ramster for the final talk of this series, Owning the Room and Embodying the Music. Just before I introduce John, I want to mention that the session today is being recorded and will be made available to view on our YouTube channel in the new year. The recording is set to active speaker view, so viewers of the recording will only see the active speaker at any time. We hope this will encourage people to keep their cameras on as, as far as is feasible for you, uh, because it's great for the speakers to be able to speak to faces rather than blank screens. But do stay muted unless you're asking a question and John will invite questions throughout. Um, if you prefer, you can type a question into the chat box, but we, we do prefer a dialogue, ideally. So John Ramster is an award-winning international opera director, educator and writer. After studying history at Cambridge University, he learned his operatic trade with the Glyndebourne Festival and Tour, assisting Deborah Warner, Peter Sellers, and the late Graeme Vick, among others. A renowned educator and director of young singers, John is currently associate head of the vocal department at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. As well as working with opera companies and festivals around the globe, John has directed many shows for touring company Merry Opera, including an acclaimed staged Messiah which has received over 100 performances in its 11 year run, as well as self penned jukebox opera, Kiss Me Figaro, which was nominated for best production at the Off West End Awards. John's novel, Ladies Man, has been translated into seven languages. He's currently writing a book on acting for opera singers and may one day finish an historical murder mystery set in Handel's London called Da Capo. Over to you, John. Wow, you've reminded me I've got to finish that book. <laughs> Gosh. Um, yes, yes, must get, get on with that. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, good to see you all. Um, uh, what I'm going to try to do today is, uh, and it's more difficult on Zoom than if we were in person, but we're going to do it anyway, because we're used to Zoom now. Um, uh, I'm going to try some imparting of some concrete skills, things that you can use in your performances, um, just to... Um, and, and maybe make you uh, rethink a little or, or readdress how you um, approach your performances, how you approach learning music, how you approach your performances of music. Um, uh, Sarah, could we put that um, quote up on the on the screen somehow or we'll put it into the chat or something like that? Yes, I'll pop it yeah. into the Okay, the I've, got, I've got a quote I want to share with you. When, whenever I start um, working with a new group of students, then I share this quote with them. Is it coming? Is it coming? Okay, there you go. It's in the chat. If you want to open it up, you can see you can see it there. Um, I'm going to read I'm going I'm going to read it out. Um, it's the, the quote is by um, a 20th century drama theorist and practitioner called Jerzy Grotowski. And um, this is the quote, you must not look for the result. But at the same time, you can't ignore the result because from an objective point of view, the deciding factor in art is the result. In that way, art is immoral. He is right who has the result. That's the way it is. But in order to get the result, and this is the paradox, you must not look for it. If you look for it, you will block the natural creative process. In looking, only the brain works. The mind imposes solutions it already knows. One must not think of the result and the result will come. Okay. Talk to me about that, people. Talk to me about that. What, what's the result that you're looking for in your work? What's the result you're looking for? Anybody can chip in. Anybody can chip in, write it, uh, talk, talk, talk to us. Anyone? Jasmine, I'm going to pick on you. Hello, Jasmine. <laughs> Unmute yourself. What's the result you look for in your work? Um, well, I'm a singer-songwriter. 
And obviously I look for a well-crafted song that also has a message, a strong mm -hmm. message and evokes emotions. Um, that's not exactly the reason why I'm here today. Um, the result I'm looking for here today is like I'm moving away from a band setting to a solo setting. So yeah, yeah. Uh, this, is a, this is a change as well. So, but I, I think I get what the quote means. It's like, um, if you try to plan it all out meticulously, it doesn't flow. It just doesn't flow. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, what, what's the result you look for in a uh, performance here? What's the result you look for in a performance? Um, I would like to have an um, intimate kind of feel of performance, but where I am more present and because I'm not that knowledgeable about it, yeah, yeah. Uh, I need to, to know what to do, how to be present in my own performance as opposed in um, performances with other people together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I do. I do, I do, I do. I do. So, so, so and, uh, um, Ingrid, hello. Hello. I'm going to pick on you now. <laughs> Hello. What, 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 what do you look for in your performances? Uh, so I'm a singer. I just finished my master. Yeah. Can you hear me? And yes, then, I can. Um, so during, so I have to do, I have to did my like three recitals. Yeah. And then on the second, on the second recital, I feel really bad because I didn't really enjoy it. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, when you sing and then you judge yourself. Oh, you made the mistake in, in the here. moment of performance, yes. Yeah, even in the moment of performance, and it, it, right? yeah, 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 and it's really annoying, yeah. and I really hate that. So on my third recital, uh, my my goals is just to like being present, like Jasmine said, being present and really have the clear picture of what I sing, like what I what I smell, what I what I what I imagine. Like I have this scenic movie in my in my yeah. own eyes. I mean, that as long like as really I. As long yeah. as I so have what's the, the result you're looking for? The result you're looking for is a good grade, right? The result you're looking for yeah, is yeah. people telling the you recital, that you're good. Of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, uh, that's all right, Aoife, don't worry. Hello, Aoife, everybody wave to Aoife. Aoife, Aoife, Aoife can't, it can't unmute and won't put it. Okay, but, but we're glad you're here, Aoife. Um, so, so, so in a performance, in an ideal world, wouldn't it be lovely if people came up to you after the show and they were telling you how great you were? Yeah, that would be nice. And, and the promoter was saying, you've got to come back next season. Why don't you come back next month? You know, all, all, of, those, all of those things, you've got, the, you've got the gig, you've got the audition. Yeah, do, do you know what I mean? What, whatever it might be, but it's how you get that result. Yeah, you know, I mean, when I talk to my singers, it would be nice to have roses raining down on you at La Scala one day. How are we going to get you there? Yes, that would be a, that would be a great thing, right? So how are we going to get there? And and what this quote what this quote does for me, and it's quite a liberating quote, I think, is is that it's telling you to take the pressure off yourself. Um, don't look don't look it's like if you walk into an, an audition or something and and basically you're saying please give me the job because i need the job yeah that's that's a really good way of not getting the job yeah if if you're if you're i don't know if you're desperate to be in a relationship and you wake up and you go today i will walk down the high street and i will fall in love with someone that's what i'm going to do today and someone will fall in love with me yeah, I think that's a really good way to ensure that nobody is going to fall in love with you today. I think that's a hugely good way of doing that. Yeah, looking for the result is never a good is ne is never um, a fruitful way of going about it. it like walk it walking onto a stage for a recital, say Ingrid, like 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 you've done, and it, and it's like I will now impress the panel. That's not going to impress the panel. That's not how you're going to do it. That's not the way that that is going to work. Um, and uh, the, the, I mean, this is something that I think we've all heard a lot, but it, the less you make it about you, the paradox is the more it's about you. If somebody walks into a coaching with me and they're saying, right, I'd love to work on this aria, I'd love to work, uh, or, or they're in a rehearsal with me and, and they're just getting on with it. And it's about what's this scene about? What's this song about? What's, the, yeah, what's this moment about? What's this phrase about? Yeah, if they're just getting on with it, that's when at the end of the rehearsal, I'm thinking, ah, oh, that person, they are great. I cannot wait to work with them again. Yeah, the, 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 it, if, if the paradox is the less you make it about you, the more it becomes about you. 
And I think that's a really liberating thought. Yeah, and, and I think you're approaching grid there of like, what am I looking at and what am I thinking about? And what's my character thinking about? And get it and getting into character about something like that, then I think that becomes super fruitful because you're looking outside yourself. You're looking to make connection. You're looking to make connection to the moment. And in that way, you're also looking to make connection to the uh to the audience as well yeah a super liberating thought that is a that that follows on from you must not look for the results and and something and something that i found incredibly valuable in my own work is what other people think about you is none of your business you can't control it you cannot control what other people think about you you just can't. What other people think about you is none of your business. Why would you look to do that? This, I mean, this is very sports psychology 101, but control what you can control. That's it. And what you can control is what you're looking at, what your character is looking at, what you're thinking about as you play this music, what this music means to you, what the what is the feeling that you want the audience to have after they leave your performance? Yeah, you can you can sort of head head for that. Yeah, make it not about you. It cannot be about you, because as soon as it's about you, then we're all we're watching is essentially some kind of ego and vanity at work. And no, and no, there isn't an audience in the world that wants to watch that. Yeah. Um, so I think this is, I think these are super liberating thoughts that you, that where you take the pressure off yourself. You take the pressure off yourself. Don't make it about you. And that's when I get performance, performers saying, oh, I don't know what to do with my hands. And, I, and I'm like, well, that's the right, you know, well, that's the wrong thing to be thinking about because that's all about you and your hands. Yeah, the person, the character that's singing the song knows what to do with their hands because it's their life. And we will I'll talk about gestures later and talk and 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 um, talking on stage because some people really hate talking on stage. Right. And addressing the audience and and and, and, and all, all of that. I, I have to I have to say as a gross generalization, I don't think it's something that I've ever seen as a problem with Irish performers. I think that, that, that people can talk <laughs> that, that, that that kind of gar garrulousness and that intimacy that you were talking about, Jasmine, that that intimacy with an audience is that that, that immediacy. I, 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 but some people do have issues with it. So we'll talk about that as well. Um, uh, what do we think about that? What other people think about you is none of your business. I th I, that's something I've understood more and more as I've got older. Um, and and I've cared less about what other people think. And, and you, you know, you know I, I, I think it's something where you go, OK, I'm going to do what I do today. I'm going to I'm going to all I can do is that because I can't control what other people think about me. So I'm just going to get on with it. I'm going to get on with it. And if people don't want it, then they don't want it. And that's OK, because I cannot please everybody all the time because that's not my job. That's not my job. Yeah, that I cannot please everyone all the time. Yeah, sometimes I can't please most of the people most of the time, you know, but that's all right, too. But that, but that, but that, but that, but that's okay too. What do we, what do, what do we think about that? Is that something that people have kind of grown towards naturally? What other people think about you is none of your business. Have you grown towards that naturally, Claire? I'm going to pick on you. I'm going to, I'm going to pick on you. Have you grown towards that in your, in your career? It's interesting. I'm, I've grown towards uh, being aware that I, when, when any situation that someone's relating with me, and if it's less useful to me in their feedback I'm interested I'm more curious now than actually taking it at identity level I'm going yeah, yeah. Mm, that's interesting right. and that yeah, yeah. kind of gets a collaboration of okay tell me more or yeah. show me how or so I find it more a learning experience than previously I would have been more kind of oh you know mortally offended or mortally stricken or something yeah yeah so it's a lovely place to be and I appreciate all you're saying thank you yeah yeah I, I I mean I mean what what I noticed with the generation that I'm currently teaching is um and then that's kind of your, your generation Ingrid is is um is is they can't make a mistake even more than we were mortally wounded in our souls when we made a mistake the current generation really can't make a mistake 
and cope with it and and be seen to make a mistake and 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 the more and and you can tell them and tell them and tell them um that's what rehearsals are for <laughs> you know i literally don't have a job if my students don't make mistakes i literally don't have a job uh, you know so I, i'm kind of i was like yes make the mistake but yeah you know and then, and then we can work on it you know but otherwise what's rehearsal for what but, is but practice I'm... for yeah, yeah, you know, you know, so, 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 um, and 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 I and I think it's to do with the financial pressures on students right now as well, and performers as well. I've, I mean, I've I've literally got students that are mortgaging their grandparents <laughs> to be, to be in the building. Yeah, you know, so, 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 um, it, it's you know, there's a there's a there's a family pressure there as as well. Um, the other thing I know, even even as, <laughs> so I'm coughing a little bit today, even as. I fully appreciate now what other people think about me is none of my damn business. Yeah, I also know that getting older is not a journey into certainty. Okay, it, it just isn't. Yeah, yeah, I think you just get better at coping. And I think you have more strategies about coping. And, and, um, and, and, and the more strategies you have, the more techniques you have at your disposal, the more times you've seen this problem and solved it before, and then things like that, then, then I think, I, I think you just get better at coping with things, but you're not necessarily getting more certain about life. Yeah, I, I, th I think I think you get to a point where, um, and uh, I had I had a very moving moment with one of my students last week, actually, where he said, I think I'm starting to realize what I don't know. And 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 it, and, and I, I, a little tear came in my eye. I have to confess. Yeah, you know, you, you know, that the, the suddenly you get somebody that starts to see the world just a just a little bit clearer. So, the less you make it about you, the more the world will make it about you. So you, that involves a lot of taking the pressure off yourself. Yeah, I must impress today. I must impress the panel. I need this job. Yeah, that that's not, or, or I need to be booked again by this venue, or I need to make this audience love me. Yeah, these are all terrible, terrible things to strive for. They might be the result you want, but actively striving for them is not going to get you the result that you need. Yeah, it just isn't it just isn't it and, and it becomes a, so so it all becomes about the work it has to become about the work um um and talk to me about how you um so i'm slightly talk to me about how you view the piece of music that you're going to be playing somebody talk to me or singing is it is it something and let me do the context is it, do you be, if it, do you become the music are you immersing yourself in the music are you somehow outside the music talk to me about how, your approaches to what you do in the moment of performance how are you connected to the music is, do, 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 talk to me about that jasmine you write your music right i do yeah i do you write your music so in the moment of singing one of your songs yeah, I don't what's like, your relationship to the song? It's sometimes it's my songs, sometimes it's old Gaelic songs. So I, I actually, um, this everything disappears. Like I'm in the song. Um, oftentimes I close my eyes, and everything else is actually not existent. It's just me and the song. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's not much of a performance there. You know what I mean? Well, like not like I'm not like jumping around and, and interacting with people in that moment because yeah, I'm yeah. immersing myself. Completely. Because you're in that moment of the song. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Ken, what about you, sir? Yeah, um, I think uh, something similar. Um, <clears throat> you know, you, you enter kind of a flow state when yeah. you're in, in the song and everything else just kind of melts away. Mm -hmm. um, and I think... I know from performance that's that's what I'm looking for. It's not to impress people, it's to hit that flow state and just know that yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm there in it. I mean that that's absolutely something that um you can't question. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? If 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 you're in the zone, happy days. Do you know what I mean? If if you if if you find yourself in the zone. Um Mr. Portman, welcome. Welcome, sir. Um uh, 
Uh, uh, we've got something from Eva here. I tried to get back into the feeling of where I was when I wrote the song. However, I tried to use that as a starting point and try to be responsive to the moment and whatever is happening in the room thereafter. Because then the song takes on a life of its own, right? The song exists in the world as an entity. And, and, how, and how one audience receives a song is not how another audience receives a song necessar necessarily. I, I, I think that's absolutely right. Um, so is there a sense of becoming the music at all? Jasmine, you're nodding. Yeah, absolutely, because it is part of me anyway, when I'm writing my own music, it's probably different if you sing somebody else's music, but um, yeah. With, with your own music um, yeah, yeah, yeah. part of yourself that you put in there. I mean, you're in a very primary creative moment there, right? Because it's come out of you. Yeah. It, it's come out of you in a, in a way that, Ingrid, maybe the, so, the, the songs that you sing, you're not writing them yourself. So it's an interpretive act. But it, it, makes, um, it makes it more difficult, I find as well, because they are your babies and you're more, <laughs> you know, your songs are your babies and it makes yeah, you yeah, more vulnerable, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've always found it when, when I've directed things I've written, I've always found I, I've, I've had to really distance myself from it. I've almost had to look at it like someone else wrote it. And I'm, I'm always thankful for the fact that maybe I wrote it six months ago. So I can like they, they stand, 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 stand off that the, 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 um, the I have to find a, the, and that distance is an enabling distance for me. Yeah, ra rather rather than this is genius, and all I have to do is put it on his feet. Do, do you know what I mean? The, the, this scene is for is just it's all there. It's all there in the words. When in fact it's usually all there in the subtext and it's in the delivery. Yeah, that 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 it, that it becomes ab ab about that. Um, do you go to the music, or does the or do you make the music come to you? What do you do, people? What do you do, anyone? Do you go to the music or do you make the music come to you? Jasmine? It comes to me. Like like when I'm when I'm writing, for example, I sometimes yeah, yeah. play songs. I sometimes stream them and I wake up with them. So that's beautiful. They yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. They, they well, I get access to them. Let's or I remember them. I don't know, but then I'm not actively planning them. Mm -hmm. I try to do that as well, but I find it very static in as opposed to the, the flow of receiving a melody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Claire, what about you? Um, music and words come to me together. Often mm -hmm. when I'm um, walking, looking at nature, uh, looking at the moon and thinking yeah. of people. So mm -hmm. it kind of comes together. Yeah, yeah. But, but the music comes to you rather than you go to it? Um, the in the moment of performer, in, in the moment, of, are you a performer, Claire? Sorry, are you a performer? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, when you perform, yeah, when you perform your music, do you go to it or do you make the music come to you? I'm in the space. It's a very spacious feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Associated. Yeah. yeah. And Ingrid, what what about you? Do you go to the music or does the music come to you? Well, it's interesting. So I just realized that I really like art song instead of opera. Yeah, yeah. So I always think that I think when I sing art song that that I really enjoyed so much, uh, I think it comes to me like easily, like I can like just like just I get everything. But when I sing opera, it's it's like I have to make effort to go to opera and then to be someone else. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, so, so when when you sing an art song, it's very much you singing it rather than a character. Yeah, so I always put my own story into the, the the into in the context of the poem. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I understand. Um, let let me uh, just do an exercise with you all. That um that is one of the first exercises I I do with my students about getting into character. Okay. Um, could you uh close your eyes for me? Close your eyes, close your eyes, and just listen to what it is to be you that feeling inside you that is the you-ness of you okay open your eyes for me now if i were to play you in the opera of your life yes okay 
I would have to work out that feeling to play you. I would have to work out how to feel that feeling inside me. Yes, okay. And I'm not saying I would be great casting to play any of you, but it's a tough world and a gig's a gig. So I would be accepting the gig and I would be having to work out that feeling that is different to the feeling that I have inside of me because you have all have different histories that have taken you to this point than I have. Yeah, we have led different lives. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I would have to find out ways to work that out, okay? We're, uh, um, we're gonna um, invent an energy now, and, may, and it could be an energy of a character, Ingrid, potentially, or it could be an energy of a song that you have to sing or something like that. We're just gonna work it out. It's, we're just gonna create a random one before we get specific with you guys, all right? Could you all put your hands out? for me and we're going to put, just put one hand out one hand out and we're going to see um uh and we're going to and we're going to create an energy here all right um ken could you give me a three-dimensional shape ken could you give me a three-dimensional shape just tell us can you unmute yourself ken just uh, just uh, tell us a three-dimensional shape and we'll all see it yeah, so it's a, a bird. I did, could get, sorry, three dimensional kind of geometric shape. Geometric shape. Like yeah. a cube or a ball or a pyramid or a yeah, cone. Tet tetrahedron. And to, to describe as a tetrahedron, Ken? So it, it's uh, like a pyramid. Uh, yeah. With three sides instead of four. Okay. Okay, so a three-sided pyramid, everybody. A three-sided pyramid. Okay. Claire, could you give me a color? Pink. What kind of pink? Uh, rouge. Pardon? Rouge. Uh, well, uh, what kind of pink is that? Describe. Keep describing it. Uh, it's got uh, beautiful tones uh -huh. and hues. Uh, towards. Is it the... kind of a dark pink? Is it kind of a dark pink? Yes. Yeah. Kind of, okay, a dark pink, everybody. A dark pink three-sided pyramid. Okay. Um, Ingrid, what's it made out of this this pyramid? What's it made out of? I think it's made of like ice cube. Okay, it's made out of ice. Very good. Beautiful. It's made out of ice. We have a dark pink three-sided pyramid that's made out of ice. Okay. Um, uh, Tom, could you give a could you make could you move? Uh, give it a movement now. It could shake, it could oscillate, it could vibrate. What, what what's it doing? Rotating around the room. It, okay, so it's kind of spinning like it's, it's moving like this. It's moving like this. Quite fast. Quite fast. No, no, steady, nice and steady. Okay, so steady, medium speed. Okay, nice. Okay, so we have a dark pink three-sided pyramid made out of ice. Then it's moving like this. All right. What I want you to do is to take that shape, and I want you to push it. Just initially, let's just push it into our chest. Close your eyes and replace that feeling of you with this feeling, okay? So it's how you relate to shape and color and texture and movement, all right? Close your eyes and push it into your chest and let that dark pinkness go through you, okay? Push it into your chest, Tom, push it, let me see you do it, <laughs> okay? And push it into your, into your chest and what that three-sided pyramid does to you, all those points and edges and facets of that pyramid, um, okay, what dark pink means to you, okay, what that slow rotating movement means to you, okay, now open your eyes and look at the world with that energy, we've replaced your energy with the energy of this, which is maybe the energy of a song, which is maybe the energy of an art song, Ingrid, and you look at the world and you sing from that point of view, so you're not singing it's it's not you. It, it is like armor in performance for me. This is like armor. If you can use character in any way in a performance, then that's armor. It's not necessarily about you. It's not about that. I'm trying to make it not about you in, 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 in some way. Yeah. And in that way, I think what they did, okay, keep on looking at the world with those eyes. Yeah. So, so you're not go, reverting back to your energy then you can always go back to it because it's like a little mnemonic now, this dark pink, and it's a feeling. 
This is like the clever beyond clever. It's not using facts and knowledge. It's about using a feeling on stage. This is, and it's instinctive. This, this song means this to me. And you inhabit that feeling and you sing from a feeling. And I think what this does is it gets you to that magic zone place a little bit faster because I think it can unleash your unconscious. It's not you consciously trying to do something. I think it, it, it's finding ways to tap into your unconscious to get to that zone place a little bit faster. All right. Okay. Okay. Take that energy out and put it on a shelf. <laughs> put it on a shelf up there. We're going to, we might come back to it. Okay. Put it on a shelf. Okay. Let, let's create another one super quick. Um, uh, let's create, uh, actually, actually, look, what, now what I want you to do is I want you to think of a piece of music that you um, play a lot or sing a lot. Okay. Okay. Think of a piece of music that you frequently sing and, may, and maybe it could do with a little bit of a refresher. Yes, maybe you sing it too much. Maybe you play it too much. Yeah, okay, and maybe it needs to be refreshed in some way. Okay, put your hand out for me. Thinking about how you feel about that song or piece of music, um, if it were a three-dimensional geometric shape, what shape would it be? Just go with your gut. You don't have to tell me, just go with your gut. Is it a ball? Is, is it a cube? Is it a cuboid like a cereal packet? Is it a cone? Is it a star, kind of some kind of three-dimensional star? Is it a pyramid? What would it be? Just go with your gut. Go with your gut. If this piece of music or this song were a color, what color would it be? Okay. Color is a big thing, how people react to color. Yeah, and just look at it. And if you don't just say blue, go an exact shade of blue. Don't just say green, go an exact shade of green. Okay. Okay, just go with your instincts. Don't overthink. Don't overthink. Overthink always results in underthink. I always think. Um, okay, and, and, and now texture. What's it made out of? If this song or piece of music were made out of a substance, what substance would it be? And that might be steel or feathers or air or water or ice or whatever, or whatever it might be. Just go with your gut. Go with your gut. Okay, so we've done shape, color, texture, movement. Let's do movement now. Okay, if this song had a movement, what would it be? Is this shape oscillating, vibrating, rotating? How fast is it rotating? Yeah, whatever it might be, whatever it might be, it might be a sort of an erratic movement, whatever it might be. Yeah. Okay, see it, see it, see it, see it. And now you're going to, and now this is maybe the most important thing is you're going to place that energy inside you somewhere. You're going to place that energy inside you. If, it, if you feel it's a very cerebral piece of music, then put it into your brain behind your eyes. If it's a very emotional piece of music, then put it into your heart. Yeah, wherever it might be. Okay, so take this energy, take this energy, and now close your eyes and place that energy. Where do you think the energy of this is going? Close your eyes. Place the energy inside of yourself. Push it into yourself. Push it into yourself. Where's it going? Okay. And then when you open up your eyes, you're looking at the world with that energy. You've changed that energy inside of you. And you can do that for every... If you're doing a concert with 12 pieces of music, you can do that with everything. And then it's not, and, 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 and then what you do, you're not letting one song bleed into another. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're not one song is, is, is kind of, they're all distinct. They might be thematically linked, but they'll always be distinct. Yeah, 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 they're, 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 and you look at the world through another energy. And that can, and that, that can be quite a spectacular thing to see actually the, 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 especially if if ingrid say you go walking into recitals and you're and you're presenting seven pieces yeah it's that the, then it becomes not about you it becomes about these different little seven slices of life and truth and human truth that you're trying to present yeah and it's not about you and you're taking the pressure off yourself you're not looking for the result you're just looking to present these little moments of human truth um, as a shape, and this energy exercise, this 
energy exercise. I've I've done I've done this with um, musicians in the past. Uh, I worked with a quartet. I worked with a quartet that were was getting a little bit dysfunctional in its relationship with each other, a string quartet, and 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 I got them talking about what they felt their quartet was for, what made their quartet special, and they all agreed on this energy, so that when they went out and to perform their next concert, they could all just put that same energy into themselves before they started playing as a quartet. Yeah, as opposed to like four different people who are getting a bit snipey with each other and have done for the last year. Did, 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 did these, four, these four people who'd been not getting on suddenly found a common ground again. And it was the talking about what they felt their quartet was for, what how they felt their quartet was different, what the energy of these four people as a synergy did together and could do together. And and if you're and if you're playing with other people, maybe you can agree on the energy of a piece. You can both inhabit that same energy as you're playing a piece, and then potentially, it gets it it it, it gets to a quite an exciting place. You're taking so much pressure off yourself. You're just making it about the piece. And the paradox is going back to where we started. The paradox is, we then think you're great. Yes, you're not looking to impress us, but we're still impressed. Yes, and we're getting the result that we need. Yes, we're maybe we're getting the job, we're getting the gig, we're getting the good grade, we're getting the rebooking. Yes, all, all, all of those things. But it's really important that when you're performing something, you're not looking for a result that's just for you, like people to tell you you're great. And I think as experienced performers here, we know that. And we know there are sometimes times when we go on stage and that's what we do and it doesn't work as a result and it doesn't work yeah and that's but it, that's in high pressure situations like ingrid like you've been in where it's a it's a where you're being judged on a recital where you're walking into an audition or whatever it might be those are high pressure things they're all they're they're kind of performances but yet they're not performances because you're going to get a mark at the end of it but don't think that any performance that you do you're not being judged in some way because you are because because you are because people because uh, people are going to come away and they're going to talk about what you what you've done um but i really love that shape exercise it gets you to somewhere quite instinctive very fast it stops that kind of uh, is this right? Is this right? Is this right? That second guessing, because you're looking at the world through a different viewpoint. Um, uh, 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 um, let me just go back because I jumped to that. I jumped to that. Um, OK, we're going to talk about how stage presence on stage now. Stage presence on stage. Um, uh, 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 uh. Claire, I'm going to ask you a question. All right. I'm going to ask you a question. Hello. Um, uh, what would you like for dinner tomorrow night? Vegetable korma. And what, what kind of vegetables will you use? Uh, courgettes, leeks, onions, sweet corn, carrots. Uh-huh. Lovely. And Black beans and lentils combined. Okay, okay, it sounds delicious. What time are we all coming around? That's going to be great. <laughs> um, but great. Um, Tom, Tom, where, where, where would you like to go on holiday next year? Next year, I would love to go and visit my parents in France. That sounds nice. Whereabouts in France? In Provence. Um, oh, nice. And, uh, nice, nice, nice. Now, this is a bit. This is a bit hard on Zoom. OK, this is a bit hard on Zoom, but as soon as I ask Claire and Tom those questions, their eyes, what did their eyes do? Anyone? What did their eyes do? Ingrid, what did their eyes do? It's a bit alive. Like... Yeah, they kind of went somewhere else, right? It's a bit yeah. difficult on Zoom because you're very like, oh, I must look into the camera. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, yeah. OK, but... Um, but, but you know, if I'm thinking vegetable korma, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not, I'm going, uh, vegetable korma. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going, uh, I'd like to go to France. Yeah, I'd like to go to France. Yeah, it's when you have a new, so when you have a new thought in life, 
you look somewhere else. That's what you do. That's what you do. And what's difficult about speaking on stage, what's difficult about performing on stage is that you have to do consciously what in life you do unconsciously. Yes, you have to con to look natural. You have to do consciously what in life you do unconsciously. And that's really hard. And that's really, really difficult. Yeah. So when you're going on stage and you're talking to your audiences, and that's something that a lot of musicians don't like to do. Yeah. But it's a lot of, of how you build up that relationship between you and an audience. Yeah. It can, can be a really important thing in bonding, in bonding you to the people that like what you do. Yeah. Then what you're going to do is you are going to if you you may be talking about one thing and and then and I remember when and and then you talk about why you really like a song or whatever it might be and you're going to look somewhere else. You're going to look somewhere else. It might be something you've learned as well. You you know that kind of awful thing is good evening everybody. My name is Blah and I would like to perform such and such by Blah. Yes, you know that there isn't the most warm thing, but if you can find the new thoughts within what you're saying. Then, then, then the way that your eyes move becomes a really important thing. That becomes a really important thing. And, it, and, it's, and it's like you're looking outside of yourself. You are looking outside of yourself. Now look around this room that you're in, everybody. Look around this room that you're in. Okay. Now what's, what's not true but is useful is that every thought you will ever have in that room is already there. Your eyes just have to find it. Every thought you will ever have in that room is already there. And your eyes just have to find it. Okay, which is a weird thought, but it but it's true. And what and what and what that does is it gets you out of yourself. There's nothing worse than seeing somebody on stage sort of scrolling words in front of their eyes, and it's all and it all feels a little bit fake. And this is something I learned to say. Yeah, yeah. When it should feel like it's just happening in the moment, even if you have prepared it already. Yes. And a smile really helps. Yeah. A smile really helps. I don't want to know about your nervousness as a performer when you're talking to the audience. Smile. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, but put a confidence inside yourself. Yeah. You can use this, this exercise that we just did. Okay. Um, uh, let, let's do a, let, Let's do another version of it. Put your hands out, people. Put your hands out. I want you to imagine that there's a ball there. There's a ball there and it's golden and it's on fire. You're holding a small sun, okay? A sm the, you're holding the energy of a sun in, 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 in your hand, okay? So it's a ball and it's golden and it's on fire, okay? And, and it's a ball of energy, okay? Take that golden flaming ball and push it into your chest, okay? And let that sun energy radiate through you. Okay, and now look at the world. Now look at the world. This is like the best version of you energy. Yeah, you put that in. I've done this before important interviews, before having to speak to people. And I put this, I put this energy in. And look, everybody's a little bit perkier. It's interesting. Everybody is a little bit perkier on the screen right now. But, but yeah, and this is good energy if you're playing, I don't know, kings or emperors or princes or leaders or generals or warriors or, or, or whatever. That, that, that kind of, that, that is, that's, that's a good energy to have. Yeah. So you, so you go out as the best version of you walking into an audition with this, walking onto a stage for an audition with this energy. It's the best version of it and it will start and you're performing performing a role and the role you're playing right now is the best version of me yeah and you walk out onto a stage and this will make you stand up straighter this will make you smile i'm glad to be here with you people tonight i'm glad to be here performing for you tonight smile yeah i'm glad you came out it's a big thing now yeah a post-pandemic nobody's got any money right now Post-pandemic, if you're walking into a room that's full of people that want to see you perform, that is a big deal for each and every one of those people because they have so many options of where they could be tonight. So many options. The first of which is they could be at home on their sofa watching any of the 500 channels they have access to. Yeah, but they're there for you. That's amazing. That bond, that live performance bond bef between a performer and their audience now becomes even more precious, 
even more vital because they're looking for that moment of live connection. That moment of live connection where you are performing for them and handing something over to them. And there is a communication and a conversation. And something, something that um, uh, I really want to say is that I think a lot of performers think that they have to supply answers. And I don't think we have to do that. I don't think we have to do that. I don't think we are answer. I don't think we are suppliers of answers to how to live our life. Yes, I don't think that's what we do. But I think what we do maybe do is we ask the questions that will make the audience think about that. Yeah, we are. I think we ask great questions. I don't think we supply great answers. Who are we to do that? But I think maybe we can ask the questions that occur to us of our audiences. Yeah, and we can do that with the songs that you sing, Ing Ingrid. We can do that with the with the art songs that you sing, which are all about how do I deal with this moment in my life where somebody has said that they don't love me anymore. What is it that we do when we deal with that moment? And you can remind your audiences of how they felt when they were younger or whatever, when that happened to them. And it might be happening to them now. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, it, it's like, how did you feel when that happened? Let me hand this experience over to you and let you, and, and how did you deal with that when that happened to you? Yeah, let the conversation happen between. We don't supply answers, okay? What we do is we look out, out at the world, we look out outside of ourselves. I think that's critical. We look outside of ourselves and what we do is we ask questions. We see the questions that may be, and if you're thinking those questions, then other people are thinking those questions. Yeah, other people are considering, other people are turning to art to try and work out what the hell is going on in their lives. Yeah, and it might be for comfort or it might be for advice even. And, and they might be wanting to share that experience in, in, in some way. Um, so we're going out onto a stage. We're going out onto a stage um, and we need to communicate. And sometimes what we need to do, I, 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 any room that you're in, particularly if you're in a sort of a larger auditorium, um, just give yourself a moment, give yourself a moment to uh, just stand on the stage with the lights on in the auditorium and see how big that room is and know how big that room is. And this is a good thing if you do a tour because playing a 400 seater is different to playing an 800 seater, is different to playing a 1200 seater, is different to playing a 100 seater. Yes, all of these things are very, very different. You need to give yourself just a moment on stage. All right, okay. Um, can we, can, let's do a little exercise together if we can. All right. Um, I want you to imagine you're on a really crowded bus or a really crowded tube train. Okay. Okay. Just do that for me. Just do that for me. You're on a really crowded tube. It's like people are right here. Are uh, here. Okay. The hideous, the hideous moment. The first time that happened to me post pandemic was an awful, awful thing. <laughs> okay. Awful, awful thing. But they're right there. People are right there. Okay. How far do you want to project your personality on a crowded bus or a crowded tube? Anyone? How far do you want to project your personality? Claire, how far? With whoever talked to me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, really? You see, what the heck oh, is going on there's, here, the, folks? there's the difference between Ireland and Britain right there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to London. You, you want to be talking to people, do you? Okay, fine. Yeah, it's yeah. It's such a friendly place, London. It's yeah. amazing on the tube. Okay, said nobody genuinely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we could be talking like this, though. I mean, when I, when within I, my own space and answer yeah, yeah. to your question. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're sort of there. You're sort of there, and you might want to talk to the person that's right next to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. That, can we agree? That, what were you going to say, Tom? I was just going to say, when I used to live in London, it, you know, it was the only the other, the other Irish people on the tube you'd chat to. Or <laughs> any, anybody who's not from London, anybody who's from London. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, so so we're kind of here. We're kind of not wanting to talk to anyone, or we're wanting to talk to maybe the person that's right next to us, if we can find someone that's willing to talk to us. Yes? Okay. That Can we agree that that's not enough to perform with? That level of projecting your personality isn't enough, yeah? Okay, now I want you to imagine you're talking to somebody about six feet away from you, two meters away from you, okay? Project your personality out to them. 
out to that person. All right. Imagine somebody you're talking to somebody standing a meter, two meters away. OK, push out your personality. That isn't enough either. And I think some people go out onto onto a stage with that level of projection of their personality. Yeah. And I don't think that's enough. And you're not going to quite cross the footlights with that. OK. Um, now, take that, the, your, your project your personality to two meters away. Yeah. Now push it out until think of the biggest auditorium that you've ever played. OK. And now push it out to fill that. OK. OK. Claire, I can see that what you're doing is you're sitting up straighter. Yeah. You're sitting up straighter. You push that. You're filling this room with you. At this point, it's like, especially if you're on stage singing, just singing a song by yourself, singing an aria by yourself or performing a piece of music by yourself. At this point, the room is your brain. The room is you. You're filling that room with you. Yeah. So you need to be somehow sense that you need to know where the back wall is. So that that person who has bought the who can only afford to buy the cheap seat right at the back gets as great a performance as somebody at the front of the circle. Yeah, you fill that room with you. Every room that you're in, every room that you're ever performing in has an energy. And while you are on that stage, you are owning that room and you need to make that energy of that room work for you. If you, you can be on the biggest stage in the world just for 10 minutes of an audition, but for while you, while you are on that stage, that room is yours. Yeah, you're not renting it, you're not borrowing it, it's yours, okay? And you need to harness the energy of that room, okay? The room you're in now has an energy. OK, I want you to imagine the energy of that room coming down the walls, across the floor and up through the soles of your feet. OK, coming down the walls, across the floor and up through the soles of your feet and you send it out back into the room. Through your eyes and and then. You send the energy back out and then it comes down the wall and then it comes across the floor and up through your feet, up through your body and out through your eyes. Yeah, you've got to harness the energy of a room. And if you do that, it means you can audition or you can perform on, on the biggest of stages. Yeah, I mean, I did years and years ago, I remember working at the Gaiety and, and that felt like a Gaiety in Dublin and that felt like a big old stage when I was working on it. Yeah. If you've ever been to the Gaiety, if you've ever been to one of those big auditoria uh, where, where, near, near where you are. OK, just imagine standing on that stage and feel the energy coming down the walls, across the floor, across the stage, up through your feet, up through your body, and then you send it back out again. And in that way, you are harnessing the energy of a room. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, and, and, and then you're never going to feel like a small person on a big stage. And it's like, oh, I'm sorry for wasting your time. Yeah, it's your stage. While you are on that big stage, that's massive. And that's when this thing of having new thoughts becomes really important. If you're on a big stage, then you're looking there and then you have a new thought and you're looking there, wherever it might be. And you need to know what it is you are looking at. You need to know what it is you are looking at. Something that you were saying before, Ingrid, yeah? What is... Well, when, even when you come to a new musical phrase, if you're, if you're doing an instrumental piece, Ken, I say, I, 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 then, 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 then there'll be a new, uh, as, as the key changes, as it goes into the minor, whatever it does, there will, there's a different thought and a different feel. And we need to see that on your faces. You need to take us there. You need to take us there. OK, we need to if, if I can tap into what you are feeling about this piece of music, then suddenly the performance starts to take off. Yeah. And you have this third. So this third level of performance, you've got the first one of you're on the tube. You've got the second one talking to somebody six feet away. And then the third level of performance is when you are pushing your your personality to the back of the room. You are filling that room with you. You are filling that room with you and you are expansive. You have this, I, I call it a generous arrogance. There is a generous arrogance of walking onto stage and sharing you. 
with an audience. Not many people can do it. Not many people can do it at all. Yeah, but walk on and just be generous with yourself and be saying, I'm worth your time tonight. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm going to I'm going to ask you questions about life and maybe together we can find some answers. That's kind of an amazing evening to have. That, and, and I'm going to share with you some pieces of music that I love and maybe you'll feel the same. Yeah. And 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 then and then it just gets that's when it becomes exciting it's not a recitation it's not a dry recitation of a piece of music where you and, it, and it's like what is it's it, it and it comes down to like these critical things of like what is your music for what is it for yeah okay tom talk to me what what, what do you play sir uh mainly guitar steel guitar slide yeah. guitar. What, what what what's your music for? What do you want people to take away? Mm. I think for me it's it's multi layered. On one level, does the music, which is uh, I think can be. I hope people enjoy and the there's a that can be. A, I like putting humor in the music as well. I like. Yeah. Uh, I also. <laughs> I think I used to put more consciously work with this and I'd like to again is like taking people to a space where they can travel and I like disappearing into the music or yeah, yeah. letting that and my hope is that you are brought somewhere as like a, a journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're traveling without traveling. Yes. Uh, and and then there's also I really, I mean, I guess when it, I, I hope I convey, say, some of the pieces I play, I find, you know, a really beautiful beauty, say, uh, there's a piece I play by Barrios, and I, I, I think it's absolutely beautiful, and if I can convey that and carry that beauty that it moves to me, me yeah, yeah. Else, then that's really special, and, but I also... So it's, it's, it's kind of touching... The divine, in a way, with something like that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it's like some of those phrases when I hear them, it's like, oh my, how did you come up with that? It's just yeah, so yeah. beautiful, and it's three notes, and it's just like, oh my god, like you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. You know. In Ingrid, t t tell me, what, 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 what is uh, when you perform? What is your music for? Hmm. Why do you perform? Just because I like it. Well, actually, yeah. Just because I like singing. Yeah. The first wife. What's your uh, singing for? What's your singing for? Well, I can say that. <laughs> well, it's for myself. I mean, yeah, it's for myself. But when people come to me and then when they say, uh, when they told me that, oh, you really have a good voice. I don't really like that actually. Mm. But I really like it when they come to me and then they told me like, oh, I really. I really touched by this story of your singing. I mean, yeah. I don't understand what you said, but I can feel the emotions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, and they can only do that because you've been working on your technique so hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what your technique is for. That's what all the sweat and all the lessons and all the practice by yourself, that's what it's for. Yeah, so, 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 so that your technique is deployed in the art of communication of a human truth. Yeah, that's what it's for. It's not just about I'm getting better at singing and that is yeah. an end in itself. That what that now that you've got now that your technique is becoming more secure and more transparent, what's it for? How are you going to use that? How are you going to use that transparent technique to talk to us about human truths, to talk about, I don't know, you know, this girl thinking about this lover that dumped her while she's spinning away and uh, yeah, yeah, you know, while while she's spinning her world. Do you know, do you know what I mean? What what is that about? What about what talk, talk to us about human passion, talk to us about human ex, extremity of emotion, talk to us about maybe maybe something that is like, as Tom said, to, to sing us something for the sheer beauty of it. But to find the beauty of it, you've got to find the meaning in it. Yeah. 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 yeah pretty music plus meaning equals beautiful music. It's if great. it doesn't have meaning, it's just pretty. It's just pretty noise. 
Yeah, and that can be great, and that can be an end in itself, and that can be fabulous. But if you add meaning to it, if you find the human truth that's in those three note phrases that Tom is talking about, then suddenly what's happening is you are, that's when you you are uniting an audience. And that's when it gets really, really interesting for an audience and for a performer. And for a performer, because because especially, especially if you're trying to build a career that's going to last you the next 40 years. Yeah. What are those 40 years going to be about? They have to be about somehow sharing what you perceive to be human truths and sharing what composers and songwriters have perceived and poets have perceived to be human truths. Yeah, that, that's when it starts to get super interesting. Yeah, because it's like, okay, what's this phrase about? That's when you're just thinking about character. You're just thinking about what does this piece of music mean to me? Yeah, let me try and work it out. Or what does it mean to the character that I'm portraying? Yeah, the energy of the song. What is the energy of this song? And you're trying to find out your shape and your color and your texture and your movement and your placement. You're trying to work out, you're going to the music and going, what does this mean? And what does it mean for me? What does it mean for me? And if you can impart that, then then the audience will start to get it as well. Yeah, and it's not just a dry recitation of a song they've heard before. It's it's what you stand for as an artist in 2023. Yes, it's what you stand for. It's what this piece of music means today. And it doesn't, and it, and it means a different thing, and it meant a different thing last year, and it meant a different thing 100 years ago. But today, this music means this, because this artist is taking it this way. Yeah, this is what this is what it means. Th this is what it means now. Um, uh, 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 uh. Let me talk about gestures. Gestures. Sometimes, sometimes when you when you're standing on stage, it, it's it's like you can get a little bit fixed. Yeah, you can get a little bit static. Um, um, this is a very concrete thing, and this and 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 I see this, but a lot of my work. I work with a lot of choral scholars who want to be in opera, okay? And, 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 and so a lot of my work is like dragging them out of the pew, get, dragging them by, by, by the shoulders out of the pew and saying, right, let's make you into a stage performer now. It's not just about voice. We need to connect you to your body. And that's why things like movement lessons and things like that are so important. Um, talk to me about gestures. Can you put these words into their correct order for me all right um uh voice gesture thought what comes first what comes second what comes third voice gesture thought what comes first anybody anyone thought thought thank you very much tom thank you thank you yeah you, you, you have no idea how many times a week i say thought comes before action right <laughs> and 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 you can go to the best stages and you can see people doing thought after they've done the action yeah you can sit on the best stages you can see that because they've been doing it every day for six weeks why would they have a thought before they moved well, that would be crazy okay uh, okay what comes next what comes next, gesture or voice? Gesture, gesture. Gesture, are we thinking? Thought, gesture, voice, or thought, voice, gesture? I think it's thought, voice, gesture, for me, mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay, anyone, anyone else? It's, um, it's thought, gesture, voice, and I think I just seen it in Ingrid <laughs> when she was talking, you know, like it was like, I think, <laughs> yeah, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, the reason, Ingrid, that some singers don't like doing gestures on stage is they do thought, voice, gesture, and they don't, and they can't figure out why it feels weird. And then they never, ever want to do a gesture again. Okay, ever, ever, ever. But if you're on stage and you want to talk, yeah, and 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 you, and you want to be chatty or whatever it is, thought, gesture, voice is gonna make it happen. And that goes all the way back to things, uh, to the end of Baroque gesture. If you've ever seen like recreations of 18th century opera, it's very, very gestured. Yes, there's the Baroque gesture we call it. And, and some people are, now, are still Baroque gesture specialists. Um, 
and, and about 1800, as Baroque gesture was coming to an end, they started writing down, they started writing down what they'd been doing for the last 70 years. And, and they said, um, a thought begins in the eyes. A thought begins in the eyes and then it goes to the body. And the gesture begins. Halfway through the gesture, halfway through the gesture, you begin to sing and the gesture completes as you are singing. The gesture, I'm going to say that again, the gesture begins in the eyes. Yeah, thought before action, people, thought before action. And that goes for anything you're doing. And if, there, if, there's a, if, you, if you're an instrumentalist, that, that kind of the impetus, that kind of that energizing dramatic breath as you start to play, whatever it might be, yeah, the intention behind that breath. And, and, that, and that can be playing a keyboard as well. That can be playing a keyboard as well. It, it, it's like we see an intention. And that intention goes to the button, and, and this applies to you speaking on stage as well. You go that the that you think you think the thought. It goes to the body. You start to gesture, and then you start to sing or you start to speak. And the gesture can complete as you are speaking. Yeah, a lot of time, what happens is um, you can't see it, but people do these little flicky gestures. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts on stage. Okay, these are like yes. Um, I would like to sing for you today. Yeah, you know that that, that 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 these little flicky things happen, and people think that that means something, but but it kind of doesn't. You're just flashing your palms at people for a tenth of a second. Yeah, and these apologetic little flicky gestures. Yeah, but if you think about you start you the, 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 you start you're starting to say a thought and the gesture is, is going and you're starting to speak now and then the gesture completes as you are speaking. Yeah, and and just in just in just for uh, um, for the singers here actually, you the Ingrid you've just spent quite a few years trying to work out how to sing a legato line right, trying to spin a legato line. And then you go on stage and you do these things that destroy your legato line. You could be singing the most beautiful legato line, but if you're doing these flicky little gestures, we can't hear it because you're interrupting it, yeah? So the thought begins behind the eyes, the thought goes to the body, yeah? The body turns that into, it starts to gesture with the intention of the thought, and then, they, then you start to sing or speak and the gesture completes. In that way, Surely gesture comes first because we are embodied physical beings seen in here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Gesture has to come first. Yes. Okay. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Um, Zoom delay will probably help this as well. Um, uh, stop thief is weird, right? Yeah. You see somebody stealing a purse out of a handbag. You go, <gasps> stop thief is what you're doing. That's what happens in life. So what happens in life, let's echo that on stage and let's echo that in how we talk to audiences on stage as well. You don't go, stop thief. That's weird. That's like a bad Supremes routine from about 1965. Yeah, okay, that's terrible. Yeah, and even they went, stop in the name of love, right? And yeah, they didn't go, stop in the name of love. They didn't do that. They didn't do that. They were doing thought gesture voice as well. Yeah. Okay. I love the Supremes. Why would they get that wrong? Yeah. Um, you know, and and and, and even and, and what constitutes a gesture on stage, Jasmine? If you're singing your songs, then there's a just having that moment of your eyes traveling to a new thought is a gesture that the audience will pick up on. I'm the, I'm you know you know you do you play do you, are you at the keyboard when you're singing your songs? Are you playing yourself? Um, no, not at the moment. At the moment, I'm either singing or playing something because on stage um, the last years, I have been playing the low whistle and you can't sing and play the low whistle. Oh, right. No, fair enough. Fair enough. But even so, there's kind of gestures and rhetorical gestures within that, right? You come to the end of a, a musical thought and then you go into another one. Yeah, that's a gesture. That's a, that, that, that's a gesture that in some ways that is a theatrical gesture you're playing here and then you're playing here rather than you're just always playing here and scrolling music in front of yourself in front of your eyes. Yeah. Okay, nobody wants to watch that. That's a, that's like a, I could buy the CD. Yes, I could listen to the recording of this and get as much out of it. Yeah. But if what we see is and now here's another musical thought now here's another musical thought here's another dramatic thought. Here's a gesture that goes with that. It's all about the breath. It becomes all about the breath. Um, uh, 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 uh. So TGV, everybody. 
TGV, all right? Thought, gesture, voice. And a TGV is a very fast French train. Remember that. Okay, TGV. It's a, a thought, gesture, voice. It kind of has to be there. It has to be there. Otherwise, that's when you start to look a little, you can look a little bit stiff on stage, yeah? But if you're doing all these things that we've been talking about of um, owning the room, Owning, knowing how big that room is is so important, I think. Knowing, it, knowing how big the room is, yeah? I think we can all agree there's a difference playing a 100-seater and playing a 900-seater. It has to be different. It has to be different. The way you project yourself out into the space, yeah? The way you're projecting those levels of performance out into the space so that that person who's only paying seven pounds on the top seat gets as much as the person paying 50 pounds down in the, down in the stalls. Yeah, they get they they have to get as much of the show as 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 anybody else. It has to happen. Yeah. Um, any questions in here, Chance? Any questions? No, I was just thinking there. It's, it, it's quite interesting because I, I've been touring for a, few, a number of years with a band from the states. Yeah, and <laughs> it's a psychedelic uh, southern rock mixed with uh, Delta blues kind of outfit excellent <clears throat> the perform, yeah and the performer i play with i mean it's like how would i describe it you know he's massive on stage mm -hmm. you know what does he I, do how does it, how does he how does he achieve that analyze what he does oh he throws himself around the room you've got it you beware of your gear oh really <laughs> you know, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah but it's it's quite funny like because i i you know probably growing up in the northern thing it's really ironic put me on a stage in an acting role i don't mind acting but i kind of through the musical you know training i had it's like well, this is music you know and then that's quite a challenge for me to rise to that level of performance as well mm -hmm. and to really embody on the stage you know in the same yeah. way and uh yeah just just some thoughts on that yeah, yeah. So, 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 are you saying you'd like to perform like your friend? Well, almost not quite as much. I don't think the yogic bends and stuff is quite my. Uh... <laughs> I do like doing yoga, but maybe yeah, yeah. Not on stage, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but I really like. But I really like that he does it. It's like you know, he's. I think in Amer a lot of American performers, they. It's almost expected. Yeah, yeah. Whereas in Ireland, it would be like, what's that? what's he doing what's he doing yeah, yeah. So, so so what would you like to do more of what would you like to be more of on stage i just do like that engaging and being yeah yeah you know and I, and, I, and I think maybe that exercise of like embodying the spirit of the music somehow yeah and i, do, I really do, do like you know what I mean? Let, letting it letting yourself go there so it's yeah. not about you it's not you so you don't you're not feeling so exposed on stage i think i think that that is a I think this is all armor for performance, but what I'm talking yeah. about here. It's, yeah, it's real it's armor really, for performance. Because I think it all depends on the genre. Like certain music, I feel very comfortable to do that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's slightly out of my usual comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, but I really like that idea you're saying about absorb that and take that in and put that out. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's take like, the energy of the room and send it back out to the room. Yeah. I, really and, like and, I think that's the beauty of live performance, right? Yes. That, that you don't get just i don't know by watching netflix you, 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 you know that 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 cannot happen you don't get it from listening to a stream either you don't get it from watching something on youtube you know you you you, you, you just don't that that connection between you and your audience so talk to me about that actually but what is your connection what do you want your relationship between you and your audience to be me or yeah, well, yeah anybody anybody yeah tom you go first um, I just really love, I mean, I'm in the zone and it's, uh, you can see people are really. Is it a sharing? Really, are you trying to share yeah. that with them? Yeah, and that's what I love. And it's when it's, there's an absolute connection. I had a beautiful show a few weeks ago and you could see that the whole audience is really there and present yeah and and, and, uh, and they and they were there with you yeah and you were creating an atmosphere that they could enter yeah. into yeah and i and i really love personally when i let's say i've got the, this is the script 
And I go there or there. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you and can free to, them, yeah. Yeah. And then when you can take people there, and, but that's a spe special energy when it gets to that point. And I think it, for me, it's like, uh, that's where I like to go anyway. Yeah, yeah. What, Jasmine, what, what, what's your relationship with your audience? Well, that would be the relationship that I want to achieve in the future, I suppose. Um, um, I think um, that it's an analogy now, because I don't know if you have that picture of you guys are Catholic or whatever, but um, in Easter night in the Catholic church, there is a thing going on. There's a fire piece of fire like being brought in with a big candle and everybody yeah. has a candle. And then um, the other boys, girls give the fire to people in the church and then the church lights up because everybody gives the fire to the next person, you yeah, know? Yeah. And then it yeah. slowly lights up like this. And that is kind of the feeling that I would like to achieve, you know what I mean? A so it's a, share, it's a sharing of your sharing. passion about what you're feeling. Yes. Yeah, and it's about, and, and, and I think some of the exercises we've done today about knowing the energy of a room, I think that will really help you on stage. Yeah, they did like like letting that letting the energy of a room come to you and go through you and you give it back to the room. Yes, that's and, an amazing I, exercise. I, I would definitely try that. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I think that's a great thing. And the great thing about that 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 exercise does, especially if you're a performer that stands on stage, is if you're feeling the energy of the energy of a room coming towards you and up through the soles of your feet and out through your eyes and back out, it stops you fidgeting on stage too much. It, it kind of gets rid of some nerves because if you're feeling the energy of your room coming up through the soles of your feet up through your body and out through your eyes then you're going to stop fidgeting it's like you are at one with the room you are at one and it's not that kind of oh fidgety 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 thing that you can see from some performers and and it, it's like an audience never wants to know your pain never wants to know about your performer's pain they want you to make something very difficult look very easy yeah, that's what they've paid their money for. That's what they paid their money for. And that being at one with the room, try and, and, and sending the energy back out, I think is a really valuable thing. Ingrid, you've got your hand up. What are you, what? Yeah, so a few months ago, I applied for this masterclass opera training. Yeah. And then, well, actually, they just give me the feedback. So yeah. they said um, the video you shared with us were accepted from a recital I performed. Yeah. And in the context of the recital of my performances are very satisfying. However, this masterclass series is an opera training program. So we also need to see how you would move and gesture in the character. Yeah. yeah. React to any other characters who would be on stage with you and express those feelings informed by specific situation the character the characters are experiencing. So what I want to ask, like, uh, could you suggest me like how to practice? I mean, like I told you before, when I sing art song and then I really like get into it. But when I sing opera and then when you're alone, but you have to imagine like. Yeah, yeah. See them. You, 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 you've just got to see them. There's a book I can recommend. Okay. okay. <laughs> There's a book I can recommend called The Actor and the Target. Okay. The Actor, the Actor and, and the Target by, by um, an Irish... English director called Declan Donnellan, who runs a company called Cheek by Jowl. He's an awesome, awesome director, but he's he's kind of um, one of the great drama theorists of our day, basically. He, he's like, um, if you know anything about drama theory, he's like Stanislavski's great grandson, basically. And, and uh, so, but the actor and the target, and, and it's all about looking outside of yourself and knowing what you're looking at and reacting to what you're looking at. That what you are looking at is try what you are thinking about. And this goes for any, any, this goes for you singing your songs, Desmond, if you want to make them happen in the moment. It's like know what the narrator, know what the singer is looking at and let, that, let it happen to them once, once and then once only. Yeah, so, so they're seeing what they're thinking about and they're reacting to it. And what they're looking at is trying to have an impact on them. If you're looking at someone, if, if you're talking to somebody on stage in your aria, then what they're trying to do is negate what you are doing. Yes, Ingrid, they're, they're, they're trying to say, no, I don't believe that, believe this. There's always an argument of some sort happening. Don't believe that, believe this, okay? And if you do that thought, gesture, voice, thing as well Ingrid then then you'll appear much more natural on stage 
Okay. Okay. But, but, but know who you're looking at, know what they're doing, see it. Just as you said, I can see the room. I can see what I'm thinking about with art song. Do the, do the same thing, do the same thing with, with an opera aria. Yeah. But that means you've got to know what you're looking at and then that will engage your eyes. Okay. That will engage your eyes and you'll know what's happening. And then, and then your eyes won't, won't, won't be going kind of glassy if you see what I mean. And it's just like, here's the music. I'm just serving up the music. Table nine, your notes are ready. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's not about that. It can't be about that. It's about, and, and remember that it's only happening once to your character. Okay, you might rehearse an aria every day, but they only sing, they only, sp they only say that moment, they only have that moment once in their lives. So just what would happen if it was just happening once? Okay, it's not the millionth time that you've sung that. Um, anything else? Anything else from people? Anything else? Yes, Jasmine, go. I have a quick question. Uh, would you have a good advice, a tip um, for someone like me who is very soft spoken generally in life? And that comes in great when you when you sing a Gaelic song, you know, it's airy and stuff. But sometimes on stage you want to speak and you want to put your vo vocal a bit forward. You would, know? You, would, would you always have a would you always have a microphone, Jasmine? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. I'm generally that, 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 that's ma that's massive. That, that 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 that's a massive thing. But 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 I think but I think um I I um speak from where you sing. Mm -hmm. Speak from where you sing. I think is the big thing. Yeah. So there's a little bit of support in there. Yes. Yeah. So, but but it, you know, I mean, if you if you yeah, you know, if you want to be that singer songwriter that sort of speaks in hushed tones into the microphone do you know what I mean then, then, then that's a great then that's a great thing too you bring people to you but if you want to go out to them yes if you, if you want to go out to them then maybe you can take the microphone away and you can come and talk to them and that's when gestures come in and you make connect you can make eye contact with people in the audience smile smile that's the big thing okay that, so that, it's that, not so much about vocal technique is it yeah no but but speak from where you sing Okay. Speak, speak from where you sing. So, so you, so you're kind of not up there. So you're not, you're not like there, just in head voice. Do you know, you, you can engage, just, a, just, just a little bit more, and, and be warm, be warm. I think with, with, with your audiences. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think that becomes critical, and share, it, share in, in the same way that you share your music, share yourself. And then what I said, generous arrogance, an arrogant generosity with yourself. People are there for you. People are there for you. They want to know what drives you. They want to know what what makes you tick. So so so, so let them know. Let them know, and don't and don't and don't be scared of that. I think. And then and then when you and there and so when you when you when you're talking to them, don't be. It might feel like you're being way too vulnerable. But that moment of when you're with an audience, or when I'm when I'm writing something. It, I, I know that the stuff I'm writing works when I'm being too open. Yeah, yeah when, when you're being too open, too vulnerable, that's probably just about right. That Because you're letting people in. You're letting people into a, to an intimate part of yourself. And I, and, I, and I think that takes a lot of courage on stage. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 so, I'm, I'm such a fan of, of my students. I'm such a fan of, of, the, of the, the people that have the courage to go up onto a stage and give of themselves, but they have to give of themselves. It can't just be a recitation. Yeah, yeah, and, um, uh, good, Any, anything, yes, Claire. Sorry, um, the, I'm curious, um, I work in the health service. Have you any spare time to save to save the NHS and half the world, really, in your spare time? I would and love that. <laughs> Let's say the I, NHS. That would be I, great. Well, good for you. Uh, mm. because it's it's like the structure of our human experience is seems to be very unrepresented in our in our learning as in some people's learning. I'm just becoming much more aware of it. I became very interested in kind of Krasipsky and kind of as you're describing just different people's, how we feel, how we see and that, but just in such a practical way as you're doing. Well, that person's name, Kozipski, uh, it's not, uh, somebody I'll look up. Uh, K-R-Y-S-B-K-S-K-I, mm, Kozipski, okay. Alfred Kozipski, he's a physicist, but one of his, Viola Spolin, um, Viola Spolin was a uh, psych oh, coaching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Amazing, yeah. When, when you're talking, 
as you're doing, I'm just getting so excited that it's it's probably there that I'm becoming more aware of it in this world. And I think collectively, I, you mentioned the younger age group before and how they may be whatever they're doing about taking uh, feedback. But I find them amazing energy that they've just get up oh, and go huge. as well. It's huge. Yeah, yeah. Massive. Yeah, yeah. So I've kind yeah, of. Yeah. I'm, and and there's, I, there's, there's, there's such a confidence in them being themselves as well and being their true authentic selves and all of that. I'm, I'm kind of loving that about this generation I'm teaching right now, actually. And it's a very different generation to the one I was teaching 10 years ago and different again to 10 years before that. They're, 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 they're a very different bunch. You can really sense a generational shift with the like the 20, the young 20 somethings right now. There's and they're so nice place. to each other and so warm. And oh, yeah. what I'm loving is listening to how you're sharing and, and teaching. And so it's, it, it's, very hopeful it's fantastic oh, thank you Claire. thanks so thank much you, Claire. no it's, yeah. it's about maximizing it's about maximizing each of you as performers it's a, it's absolutely about that and 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 like i say if you go out on stage and if you're open and generous with yourself and you know what you're looking at ingrid you know what you're looking at you know what you're reacting to you know you know what the narrator of that song or the or the the person who is playing that piece of music what or knowing what that piece of music means to you yeah then then you can impart that you can impart that and you can make that live experience incredibly precious. Okay, I think that's our time, Sarah, isn't it? I think that's our time. Absolutely, yeah, we, we have reached that time as we always do, unfortunately. Um, so I want to thank you, John, for such an inspirational session today and giving people thank the you. It's been fun. tools to think about how to change their energy on stage and communicate with the audience you know providing a toolkit for people I think is what we're all about so thank you for that and thanks to all of you for your uh, wonderful and open participation um I'm just going to wish you all a Merry Christmas because yeah, we're at, Merry the Christmas, end, everybody. at the end of the series so Merry Christmas to all of you Merry and we hope to see you again in in, in 2023